Hey guys, back for another one. Um, with this one, I was just gonna, we'll just do a quick one on how I look after my gear. I get asked a lot at work on how to wash my fishing gear at home or wash fishing gear properly at home. I hear all sorts of people saying all sorts of things about spraying and blasting, even some guys putting it in the shower and all sorts of weird things. So what I was gonna do, I was just, because I just went for a quick flick before along a bank. What I'm going to do now is go outside, grab the hose, and just give you guys a quick demo on how I look after my gear. I'll be honest, my gear sees nothing but fresh water. I do not spray it with anything, even though there is a can of WD-40, but that's not full of reels at all. So all my gear, it doesn't matter if, uh, when I get back from fishing. So when I get back from fishing, rods, reels, whatever lures or I've used, and all my odds and sods I've taken with me, like your D-hookers, scales if I take them, lip grips, even knives, all get washed with fresh water. But the only thing I give WD-40 is these tools. So after they're dry, completely dry, I'll get the WD and give them a little squirt in their little gaps here, just to keep them going, all the springs inside and work in order, okay? So give that a spray and give that a spray in the spring, it does, won't hurt. The scissors, and even like the little D hookers, that's what that's for. I do not touch my reels or line or go anywhere near it with any sort of spray. No tackle guard, none of that. All my rods and reels you see here, I'll just pick this up, sorry guys, you're probably, probably gonna be a bit dark. But all these reels and rods, some of these are like 20 plus years old. And there's no corrosion on this gear at all, or anywhere, the only thing they've ever seen is fresh water. It's all been fresh water. Now, I took these two for a spin last night. Um, we'll just go out the front and we'll give them a light hose and I'll show you how, how I do it. And we'll come back and for, for a chat after that. All right, guys, next part is when you're about to wash your gear, always do your drags up tight. What that does is stops all the water getting into your drag washers and making them sticky. Doesn't matter if it's a spin reel, overhead reel, game fishing gear, whatever it is. Always do your drags up tight on all your fishing gear. All your reels, okay? So, we'll just do it up tight. Now we'll go to the hose and put on a very light misty spray. And now that you're hose on a light misty spray, just give it a damp down, okay? I prefer a little bit better than that. Just a light spray, like so. Okay. There's one. Now, put on a bit, of, a bit more pressure. Okay, that one. Now you just give your rudder, rudder wash and lures. Okay, that one. That's it guys. And I'll show you the next steps back inside. Now that that's all done, um, you just gave the gear a light hose. That's all I do, it's all, they, it's all my gear sees. Okay, so with the rods and your lures, just give them a, you know, a bit of a blast, get the salt off them. But with the reels, as you saw, 
I just had the hose, it wasn't quite a misty spray, the nozzle was playing up a little bit, but there wasn't no pressure on it. Bugger all pressure. You don't want to blast your reels with fresh water. You've got little breathers over them, and all you're doing is blasting salt and sand into those little holes, that's inside. And over a few months and a few washes, you know, your reel will start corroding inside, the grease will start getting thick and chunked up full of um, salt, and then you've got to be pulled apart in service, the bearings might start rusting. So, Keeping that in mind, these don't usually get that wet, they might get a little bit of spray, so it's not much, they're designed for a little bit of spray, it doesn't worry them. So just a very light misty spray with your hose at home just to get the salt off them, not blast it into them. While the drag's up tight to keep the water getting in your drag washers. Okay, just what you saw, that's all I do with my gear, all my gear. And then after you've finished, go inside, I just wipe these down with a rag just for the video, or you can let them drip dry, but once they're dry, Okay, back the drags right off. Okay, this goes for all reels, overheads, bait casters, doesn't matter what you're using, all reels, back the drag right off till it's free. Take all the pressure off the internals. That's it, guys, put it away. Don't spray it, don't do anything else to it. Oh, there is one thing you can do, I, will, I do tell people you can do if you really want to, but not after every trip, just after every few trips. Okay. I'll back the drag off this one as well, because this one's nice and dry. There's one thing you can do to keep your reels in better condition. I very rarely do it, but on occasional. Occasionally, take the screw out of your roller bearing. Don't pull the roller bearing stuff out or pull it apart. Just take the screw out and get one of those on Daiwa. You get it like a little Daiwa tube with a needle on the end of it. Uh, reel oil. And then, just put that in, the little, put it in there, a couple of drops. It'll keep your roller bearing on the offline roller in good condition for a lot longer, okay? Just a couple of drops and then put the screw back in. That's it, doesn't need much. And on all the latest reels, a lot of the reels now have got bearings and handles, okay? And if you look, there's either a couple of screws where you can take a cap off or there's a little hole, pinprick hole in the end, where you can actually put a couple of drops of oil in there too to keep your handle spinning freely with the bearings in there. So apart from that, the handle and the roller bearing, a couple of draw, drops of oil on them. That's it. Don't touch your reel, don't grease them, don't pull them apart, leave them alone. Okay, until um, something actually goes wrong. If your start, bearing starts playing up and gets a bit stiff or noisy, take it to a reel repairer, take it to somebody professional who does them properly and spend a bit of money on your reel if it's a good quality reel and get a new bearing, put it in and fix it up properly. But you don't need to get them serviced every six months or anything else. That's crap. Just look after them like I just showed you there, the bit of light fresh water, give a couple of drops of oil, and leave them alone until they actually break, guys, okay? And when something goes wrong, then get them fixed. Because once you pull the reel apart, they're never quite the same after it. They really aren't. And as you saw, a lot of my gear here, all it does sees is fresh water. Some of these outfits are like 20 plus years old, still working fine. I think some of these have never even been serviced and they're still running beautifully. The only thing I generally do to my reels is may, occasionally might be a, a roller bearing or changing the drag washers, as you saw with one of the reels. I've done it in game reels too. It's mainly drag washers or bearing, and a lot of that you can actually fix yourself, especially if it's like a line roller or something, not too technical. Apart from that, fresh water, leave them alone. Um, well, guys, I hope that, that helps. Um, I know you're going to probably argue with me and tell me a lot of guys tell you to spray and do this and do that. Well, if you want to go ahead and use all different sprays and it works for you, that's fine. I'm just showing you what I do with my gear. I keep it simple. It works very well. And, yeah. Um, works for me. And I it'll work for you too. If, as long as you don't use a hose and blast. It's just very light. It'll keep your gear in good nick. And apart from that, I'll see you again in a few days. I'm not sure what's next, but we'll see what happens. See you then.